Hello, today we're going to look at some patterns. So a pattern just means that there's a rule that connects different parts of something together. So let's see if we can see a pattern when we're talking about our dots that we've got here. If this is the first situation, this is the second situation, and this is the third situation, what pattern is there that brings us between our different situations, between our different terms is what we're going to call them. Well, it'll help to label things a little bit. If we call this our first term, which we're going to call T1, we'll talk about Y in a minute, we'll call that N is 1. So N will be our term number. So this would be our second term. And this would be our third term. If I'm given a picture type situation and I'm doing maths, what I want to do is use that picture to find some numbers to work with. So in term one, how many dots do I have? I have one dot. In term two, how many dots do I have? I have three dots. And in term three, how many dots do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five dots. So what type of pattern have I got here? What's happening to get me from here to here to here? Well, I've started out with one dot and then I have three dots. So I added two extra dots. And if I had three dots and I go up to five dots, I have added two dots. So the pattern that brings me from one situation to the next, from one term to the next, is that I add two each time. The difference between each term in my pattern is adding two. So I add two and I add two. So what would be the next number in my pattern? What would be T4? What would be my fourth term? How many dots would there be in the fourth term? Well, I would just add two again and I would end up with seven dots. So that would, when n is 4, when I'm at my fourth term, I would have seven dots all sitting in a row. So that's how I would continue my pattern. And the next one that would be in T5, in term 5, there would be nine dots. Seven plus two would be nine. And the pattern continues on in that way. Now, the name for this type of pattern is linear. And I want to show you why. So I have my graph drawn here, my X and Y graph, but at this time I've labeled it not as X and Y, but as N for the number of my term and TN for the term itself. So when N is 2, T is 3. When N is 3, T is 5. So let's get our coordinates that we could put on our NTN graph, on our XY graph. So when N is 1, when N is 1, TN is 1. The next one, when N is 2, TN is 3. When N is 3, Tn is 5. So these are my points that I can put on my coordinate plane. So 1, 1, I start at the origin, and in the door 1, and up the stairs 1. Uh, and my next point is 2, 3, start at the origin, in the door 2, up the stairs 3. Start at the origin, in the door 3, up the stairs 5. Now, I said that this was called a linear pattern, a linear pattern. Linear means line. It's a line pattern. If I look at my points here, they all sit in a straight line within my ability to draw. So what I'm going to do is draw in a nice straight line in between them for you to see. Now, 
I have my blue line drawn in and we can see that at all of my points sit on a dead straight line. So my pattern is linear because if I draw a graph of it, the graph is a dead straight line, a line I could draw with my ruler. Now, in terms of what these numbers are, what would be the way of describing the pattern between those numbers? Could we figure out a pattern that's going on between those numbers? The first number is 1, the second number is 3, the third number is 5, the fourth number is 7. What can I say about these numbers here? 1, 3, 5, 7, the next one is 9, the next one is 11, the next one is 13. They are odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, all on, adding two each time. All of them follow a pattern, which is that they are odd numbers. Now, if we, care, if we think carefully about how it is we would write an odd number, I write my term one, term two. We think carefully about how we would write an odd number. They're very closely connected to even numbers. If I look at my, and if I think about my even numbers, they'd be multiplied, they'd be multiplied by two. So an even number would be where I was multiplying by two. And an odd number, is one off of that. So if I look at t3 is 5. If I multiplied 3 by 2, I'd get 6, and take away 1, I get 5. If I multiply 4 by 2, I get 8, minus 1 would be 7. 5 by 2 would be 10, minus 1 would be 9. 2 by 6 would be uh, 12, minus 1 would be 11. 2 by 7 and would be 14, minus 1 would be 13. So there's a pattern here. If I take my value for n, the term, as a term number, and I multiply it by 2, and then I take away 1, I get the numbers in my list. So the terms in my pattern come from taking an even number, 2 times n, and minusing 1 away from it. So this is a way of defining an odd number, just like defining an even number would be 2 times some other number. An even number is some number, a whole number multiplied by 2. That's the way of defining an even number. And this is a way of defining an odd number. So this would be the pattern for odd numbers, or a pattern for odd numbers. And this would be a pattern for even numbers. So, being able to spot things like this, where we are one off of doubling our value of n, is a very good thing to be trying to train ourselves toward. If some of us are able to do that, that's great, but that's where we're trying to train ourselves toward. So we don't need to worry if we you wouldn't be able to do that just yet, but we're training ourselves, we're trying to uh, practice thinking through our patterns so that we can spot how to do these things. As an example, just to show you how to use this pattern, how to use this formula, if I wanted it to know what the first term in my pattern was, one, I'd have t1 would be two times one minus 1 would be 2 minus 1 would be 1, which is indeed the first number in my pattern. T2 would be 2 times 2 minus 1 would be 2 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3. So our rule here is giving us a way of saying, if I want to know the number in my list, I take the term number, n, and I double it, and then take one away, and that gives me the number in my list. And I can see that by writing out my list 
uh, and looking for a pattern. We'll learn another way of finding this type of formula we call these, or equation, later on. If we take a similar situation in like uh, this one here, where we have 4, 8 and 12, how do we get between the numbers in our pattern here? What's the e relationship between them? Well, I'm adding 4 each time. So how would I get my next number in my pattern? What would be the fourth number in my pattern? So this is T1, T2, T3. What would be T4? Well, I'd just add 4 again. So I'd end up at 16. And now if I wanted to know the next one, if I wanted to know T5, that would be just add 4 again, and I'd end up at 20. Now can I again see a pattern here? When n is 1, t is 4. When n is 2, t is 8. When n is 3, t is 12. When n is 4, t is 16. When n is 5, t is 20. What's happening? If I know my value of n, how do I get to my value of t? Well, I'm just multiplying by 4 each time. So my terms come from just taking my value for n and multiplying it by 4. Whatever n is, I multiply it by 4, and that will give me my number in my list. Now, just to put it out again, these are again linear patterns. What defines a linear pattern is that if we're adding the same amount on each time. So the difference between our terms in our pattern is the same. So that's what makes a linear pattern, something that when we graph it gives us a line. So if we look here, we'd have 1 and 4 would be our first point, 1, 4. Our second point would be 2, 8. And our third point would be 3, 12. We can stop at that. We'll be able to see if we get a line. So start at the origin, 1, 4, 2, 8. Uh, and 3, 12. Obviously, you can do this very neatly in your copy books because you have ruled paper. Uh, and if I draw a line through that, I get that my points all sit in a straight line. So it's a line, so it's a linear pattern. And we know that if we have the same difference, we're adding on or subtracting the same amount each time as we go along in our pattern. So that's what we need. If we can spot what rule is connecting our uh, numbers in general, that's excellent. But what we can definitely all do is look for what we're adding on or subtracting each time to keep the pattern going. And that is what we need to practice 